So everybody open your religion book to page 66. Make sure that you're ready to read. Should be on page 66 and make sure that you are reading loudly and following along as others read. I will start so everybody make sure that you're following along with your finger. Jesus as priest. Because Adam and Eve sinned, they wounded their abilities to think and to choose. What does wounded mean? What does wounded mean? Mason, hurt or injured. So they hurt their abilities to think and choose. Remember, that's one of the consequences of original sin. We have that too, right? It's really hard sometimes to choose the right thing. Before original sin, it was easy to choose the right thing and to do that. But now, because Adam and Eve committed that original sin, not only did they get punished by it making it hard for them to think about and choose the right thing, but it also makes it hard for us, all of their descendants. They did not always act as images of God. They lost grace, and they were not able to return God's love. Remember, that was another consequence. They lost grace, which meant they lost their ability to be able to do what? Ethan? Not to think and choose. What was grace? Mason, to go, to heaven. to go to heaven. That's another consequence we had. We lost grace too. But how are we able to get grace back? Victoria. God promised Adam and Eve that they would, that he would bring down Savior. Okay. So he said he'd send a Savior to save people. And so he did. He sent Jesus. But now, are we born with grace? Are we born with grace? Smith? No. No, we're still not born with grace, but we are able to get it. When do we get it, Smith? When do we get it back? When we are baptized. When we're baptized, we're able to get it back. Okay, let's keep reading. God promised Adam and Eve that he would send a Savior, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, that send a savior, that's a period. Jesus, God the Son, is our savior. Only Jesus could make up for original sin and all other sins. Only Jesus could repair our relationship with God because only Jesus is both God and man. So we know God is a heavenly body, but he doesn't have a body. He has a mind and a will, but he has no body, kind of like the angels. But Jesus had a body, right? We see pictures of him. We know people were able to touch him. So he was both man, but he was also God because he's God the Son. Go ahead and read next. Smith, loud and slow. Everybody follow along with your finger. Jesus is the perfect image of God. We are created in the image and likeness of God. Jesus came to teach us who we are by showing us God and showing us how we should act as images of God to return God's love and to help us to return God's love. So Jesus came and he helped us to show God love, which meant he also helped us be able to receive God's love. Read next, Zadie, loud and slow. A priest is, is one who offers sacrifices to God to show love for God and others. Jesus as priest shows us by his example how we should act. He shows us how we should offer ourselves in sacrifice to show love for God and others. Jesus also shows us that we should forgive others as he forgives us. So, that's what we know a priest's job is to do. To show us how to act. To show us how to love God. To show us how to love others. Even to show us how to love ourselves. 
So Jesus was actually what we consider the first priest because he came to bring everybody closer to God. What is a priest's job? What is a priest's job? Michaela. To teach you about God. Which does what for us? If we learn about God, we, Michaela? We learn about him and we know about him. And if we know about him, what does that make us do? Victoria? Be like him. Be like him. And if we're like him, what does that mean? Zari? We love him. We love him, which means? Michaela? We can tell people about him. We can tell people about him, which means we are? Mason? Remember, Jesus came to bring us closer to God. We think of Jesus as the first priest. Jesus' job on earth was to bring us to God. What is a priest's job now? Think about what I just said. Zadie? Bring us closer to God. To bring us closer to God. All of those things that you guys mentioned, does that move us away from God or closer to God? Closer to God. Closer to God. And then what is the priest's job when we do when we go to confession? What does the priest do in Jesus' name? In, oh, I'm sorry, in God, well, in Jesus' name. Aaron? His job is to forgive us. His job is to forgive us in Jesus' name. Like, he can't do it by himself, but Jesus works through that priest to forgive us. So if he forgives us, what does that teach us to do for others? Carla? To forgive others. It teaches us to forgive others. Do you think we should be able to be forgiven if we refuse to forgive anybody else? No, that's not fair. If we want to receive forgiveness, we also have to realize that other people deserve our forgiveness too. Just like we deserve, deserve Jesus' forgiveness. Okay, I'm going to read this quote from Pope Benedict XVI. Make sure that you are following along with your finger. For through the apostolic proclamation of the gospel, the people of God is called together and assembled so that when all who belong to this people have been sanctified by the Holy Spirit, they can offer themselves as a sacrifice, living, holy, pleasing to God, from Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Through the ministry of priests, the spiritual sacrifice of the faithful is made perfect in union with the sacrifice of Christ, the sole mediator. Through the hands of priests and in the name of the whole church, the Lord's sacrifice is offered in the Eucharist in an unbloody and sacramental manner until he himself returns. That's a quote from um, Pope Benedict the 16th to the general audience on June 24th, 2009. Now that's a fancy way of saying Jesus made sacrifices, priests make sacrifices, both of those sacrifices teach us to make sacrifices. What is the sacrifice Jesus made? Zori. The sacrifice he did was he died for us um, on the cross. So Jesus sacrificed his whole life. He died for us on the cross. What sacrifices, what sacrifices do priests make? Victoria? Eucharist that you're thinking of. Yeah. But what does a priest have to do to be a priest? Is he allowed to make a lot of money like other people? So what did he sacrifice? Aaron? He sacrificed his time to be a priest. Well, he sacrifices his time because he has to spend a lot of time in prayer. What else does he sacrifice? Think about what a priest can't do that regular people can. Mason? He can't get married. He has to sacrifice a family of his own. 
What else? Mason? He doesn't make a lot of money. He gets enough money to live, not have to be homeless, but he can't buy himself a lot of nice things. Zari? I have a question. Okay, quickly, and we'll see. I may not have time to answer it right now. Why can't the priests get married? Because they're following in Jesus' footsteps. Did Jesus get married? Did Jesus have a girlfriend? <laughs> Did he? Did Jesus have a girlfriend? No. So Jesus was the first priest, so the Catholic Church believes that priests should follow in the footsteps of Jesus. That means they don't get a lot of money. They have to spend, a, they get enough to live, like Jesus had enough to live. They, um, they have to spend a lot of time in prayer, and they can't get married. And there's other stuff too, but those are kind of the biggest things that you guys would understand. There's more to it, but it's more of like a middle school, high school becoming a priest thing. So those are some sacrifices that priests make. Priests also have to listen to everybody tell the bad things they did. Does it make you feel kind of bad sometimes when you hear about bad things other people did? If you hear about bad things other people did, does that kind of make you feel kind of bad sometimes? Michaela, is that a dog? Oh, okay. I like seeing Newt. Oh, I got a loop. Sorry. I got really excited. I've seen Smith's dogs, but I got I got real excited about Smith's dog before, but it was a new dog. Okay. I love dogs. Yeah. Sorry, I got real excited for a second. Anyway, what was I talking about? I lost were, my train of thought. You were talking about um, how... Oh, yes. So when you hear about something bad somebody else did, sometimes it makes you feel kind of bad, even though you didn't have anything to do with it you're kind of like oh that's sad why did they do that well think about it a priest has to do that all the time every time they hear what Aaron every time they hear sins in confession now they're probably not gonna feel that bad when you tell your sins but some people do some pretty bad stuff and they're also not allowed to tell anybody yeah. nobody they're not allowed to tell a soul mm-hmm if a priest, if you confess something to a priest and that priest tells, in God's eyes, they are no longer a priest. Anything, because it's a bond, it's a sacred secret almost between you, the priest, and God. So if they tell your sins to somebody, in God's eyes, they're no longer a priest. Colin, quickly. They probably don't remember since they're And they probably don't people. remember too because they hear a lot. But if it's a big, big sin and you confess and you are truly sorry, they are not allowed to tell anybody. Even if a police officer says, hey, I saw this criminal came and confessed to you, what did they tell you? They have to say, I can't. They cannot tell. Victoria. So like if a criminal Can't tell the police. Yep, but are they going to be forgiven if they don't really mean it? Is that person going to be forgiven? And if they killed someone, do you think they really mean it when they say sorry? Probably not. They're probably too far past that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so priests make a lot of sacrifices. We know the sacrifice Jesus made. We know the sacrifice priests make. What sacrifices do we make? How do we offer ourselves in sacrifice? Do we have to do what Jesus did and die on a cross to sacrifice ourselves? No, what can we do to sacrifice ourselves? Yes, Aaron. We sacrifice, we sacrifice the things like not watching TV for a day or fasting. Good, so fasting, ooh, that's a good word. Like on Fridays in Lent, we don't eat meat. That's a way we can sacrifice ourselves. Now, if we don't like meat and we say, I'm giving up meat, is that sacrificing yourselves? Mm -hmm. No. Aaron also said we can sacrifice ourselves by not watching TV one day and maybe spending time in prayer, helping somebody else instead. How else can we sacrifice ourselves? Victoria? Okay, 
we can spend more time at church. We can sacrifice ourselves by spending more time at church. Zari? We could do a yard sale and try not to keep everything that we don't need and give it to charity. Good. We can donate money. Mason? Is that what you were going to say? What were you going to say, Mason? How can we sacrifice ourselves? Maybe not being so like greedy, not eating food like constantly, maybe donating some. Smith? We can live like people did back then and not and like go without electricity for a day. Okay, we could do that in order to save money to donate. It's more when we say we can sacrifice ourselves. We don't mean our actual lives like Jesus did. But we mean things like our time our money, our energy, our toys, our clothes, our food. We can give those to people in need. We can give all of those things to people in need. Time, money, goods, food, whatever. Prayer. That's what we mean by sacrificing ourselves. We don't mean we are going to die. We just mean give your time, give your money, give your effort. Not all of it. Because you still need to live, just like priests still need to live. They don't get no money. They get enough to live. Well, you guys need, you guys get enough to live too. But if you have extras, share it with others. That is what they mean. That's what we mean by sacrifice ourselves. Let's see. Go ahead and read next. Mason. Oops. Loud and slow. Let's chunk it. Correct, but let's chunk it so we can see how to say it, like if we just couldn't get it. Every time the sound changes, now these aren't syllables, because what I say, ordained, ordained. Do I say that? Ordained. No, I say what? Ordained. Or, oops, sorry, I'm moving my hand. Ordained. But that's a suffix. So we're going to leave it. We're going to say it as a separate part. Ordained. Because remember, AI almost always makes what sound when they're together? When A and I are together, it almost always makes what sound? Zadie? A. A. Ordained. Ordained. Okay? Next page. So that's a priest's job. I can teach you about God, but can I forgive your sins? Can I, am I allowed to celebrate the Eucharist? But am I allowed to be the one leading the celebration of the Eucharist? Am I? Can I bless it and give it to you as Jesus' body and blood? Can I change it from bread and wine to uh, blood, body and blood? No. I can celebrate other sacraments, but I can't lead them. Just like you guys can do some of these things, you can teach others about God, but only a priest can be the one leading the sacraments and forgiving the sins and changing the bread and the wine to Jesus' body and blood. Okay, read next. Michaela, loud and slow. Go slow. Remember, don't let your brain guess the word that comes next. Read the word that comes next. At baptism, we receive an... Ooh, this is a good word to chuck. I'm going to put... Okay. 
Can you see Michaela? Yes. Okay. N D Ooh. N D I F O. Very good. Oh, I liked, I was going to say, would we say that bleh? That's what it looks like. But when we have B-L-E together, does it sound like bleh? What does it sound like? Michaela, you told us. Bull. Bull. Like a quick bull with an, a very small E in the middle. Bull. Not bell, but bull. So in, del, i, bull. Take out the, the pauses and what do we have? Indivisible. Not indivisible. In, del, i, bull. So take out the pauses and we have in, del, i, bull. Now this may be a word you've never heard before, but I'll tell you what it means. Who can help her out? What do you think it is? Without the space, it, without the pauses, Erin? Indelible. Indelible. Now you may be like, I've never heard that before in my life. It just means permanent. Indelible means permanent. Sometimes when older people talk, they call it an indelible marker. That's how I learned what indelible meant because like my parents would call it an indelible marker. It means the same thing as a permanent marker. So they would call a Sharpie an indelible marker. Okay, go ahead, start that sentence again, Michaela. Oh, it tells us what it means, sorry, I forgot. Go ahead, Michaela. At baptism, we receive an indelible or permanent particular. Not quite. Let's look. How would you say that? But there's no E at the end, so would you say it I or I? I. So. Spur. Spur. I can't say because of the glare. Sorry, it's an I. Can you see this? Okay. Here, I'll Yes. Write. Okay, so that's an I. Spear, or I'm sorry, spur. I. Ooh. Two. Oh. So, spur it to all. If we say it together, all together, we say spur it to all. But that's not something I know, but what does it sound like that you do know? Spur it to all sounds kind of like... Particular? Not particular. That's too many syllables. Who can help her out? What does spur it to all kind of sound like? Sorry. Spiritual. 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 Okay? You can just read um, or permanent. Start with or permanent. Or permanent spiritual. Spirit or permanent spiritual. Chapter or Not chapter. Seal. You let your brain guess. We belong to Christ. Through, through ba baptism, we share in the cover up ly and what is that word priest now add what what would ly at the end of a sentence say lee so put priest and lee together and we come up with the word priestly mm -hmm. through baptism we share in the priestly office of christ that does not mean that we are ordered. We are ordered. Not ordered. That's a, that's the, this word from earlier. Oh. Let's chunk it up here. Or. Dang. Ed. But when ed is at the end, do we say ed? If it's a suffix, do we say ed? D. Duh. We duh. just say duh. So, or dain duh. Or dain. There you go. That does not mean that we are ordained. 
priest rather through our baptism we are think about what oi says when it's together when oi is together what does it almost always say michaela oi oi so look around it and you can chunk it knowing that oi almost always says oi that's the hardest part of that word an oid not quite let's look at it up here it's hard because sometimes we do have to say the ed at the end usually if it's like a t we're gonna say that ed we're gonna say ed so n oint ed take out the spaces or the pauses and what do we have anointed anointed okay keep going Rather, so our baptism, we are ointed anointed with oil and receive the baptismally. Baptismal. Baptismal chapter. Not chapter. Character. There you go. Or seal to share in Jesus. Work as priest. That's supposed to be Jesus is, but religion books always, always, always get this wrong. It is supposed to be Jesus apostrophe S. Religion books always get this wrong. So it is supposed, so if you see Jesus apostrophe, it is supposed to be Jesus is because we say that S sound at the end, right? So we need that extra S. Otherwise it says in Jesus work. That sounds weird. So it's, it is, so every time you see a Jesus apostrophe, it is supposed to sound like Jesus is for religion books since I was a kid have always gotten that wrong. We need to look more at grammar. So go ahead. It is Jesus is, and that'll make it sound better. Jesus is work as priest, propo head. Prophet. P remember when PH are together, what do they almost always sound like? Pro. Not when P and H are together, they almost always sound like what? Aaron? F. F. Yes, F. So Jesus' work as Prophet. Prophet. Prophet and King. We are not order not priest. order that's that word we are not ordained there you go priest so we cannot selves in sacrifice to show love oh you skipped a line sorry oh so we cannot celebrate the That EU sounds like long U. So you, ka, Eucharist. There you go. Eucharist of. Not of, oh, but. Sins in the sacrament of reconciliation. But we should offer ourselves in sacrifice to show love. For God and other. We should also forgive others as God forgives us. The baptismal Good. seals. Cover up E-N. And what is that word? Able. So add E-N to the beginning. Unable. Enable. Enable. And...
common sense. Commits. Don't add extra syllables. Commutes. Commits. That's a Commits plus two. Exercise our baptism. Our baptism. Priesthood by... Part tick part tick. Usually if it's I C I that C is gonna be a soft C. So not a hard C like K, but a soft C like C. Cover up the I and G and what word does that look like? So if we can find the base words, that'll also help us figure out what the word is. So if we cover up ing, what word does it look like? Somebody help her out? Um, let's see, Zadie. Without ing, mm -hmm. participate. So without ing, it looks like participate. So if we add the ing sound to the end, what do we get, Michaela? Participating. There you go. Participating in the mass and by giving of ourselves to God and others. The power to act as priest is called love. Love comes to us along with the grace of baptism. Good. So when we are baptized, we are able to share in the things in the priestly office. That means, does that mean that we are priests? When we are baptized, do we become priests? Zari. Yeah. No, but we do receive grace, which means we can do a lot of the same thing that priests do. Like what? What things that priests do can we do? Aaron, tell me one thing. We can, we can pray. We can pray. Mason? We can make sacrifices. Zari? We can, um, we can tell people about God and Jesus. We can teach others about God. What else can we do? There's all kinds of examples here. Oh, Michaela, don't forget to mute yourself. Oh. I see Zari's hand, but let's see if somebody else. There's lots of examples in that paragraph that Michaela just read. We heard um, we can love others, we can pray, we can make sacrifices, we can teach others about God. There's one more thing that priests can do that we can also do. Not the same way priests do it, but we can do it. Victoria? No? Don't, it's in there. Everybody sit up, you're tuning out. Aaron? We can forgive. Now, can we cause their sins to be forgiven by God like a priest can? No, but we can say, I forgive you. We can't say God forgives you, but we can say, I forgive you. Okay, please read next. Colin, loud and slow. Jesus as priest shows us by his example, how we should act at baptism. Not at. As baptism. Not baptized, but cover up the D and what do you see? Baptism. Is that how we say that? Cover up just the D. You have an E. You have I consonant E. So what does that E do to that I? Make it more. Okay, so how would we say that without the D? Baptized. Now add the D sound. Baptized. There you go. Priest. He shows us how we should offer ourselves in sacrifice to show love for God and others. Jesus also shows us that we should forgive others as he forgives us. The more we receive the sacraments of the Eucharist and of the of penance, 
from our Orden. Not Orden. Or. Then. How do we say A I? A. So. Or. Then. Just A. Mm -hmm. How do we say that all together? Just A. Mm -hmm. Then. Or. Then. A. But do we say? ed always ordained doesn't sound right but if we take out the e sound or dain d ordain the more we receive the sacrament of the eucharist and of penance from our ordained priests the better we can act as bat baptized priests now, they're saying ordained priests and baptized priests. Ordained priests are the people who have gone through all of those sacraments and they have been blessed by the bishop and they are now priests. Like Father Marshall, Father Reuben, Father Robert, um, Father Gonzalez when he was here, Father Val. They are all ordained priests. We, who are baptized, can be considered baptized priests. So ordained priests can do things like celebrate the Eucharist, forgive sins in the name of Jesus, and do all the things that we think of like Father Robert or Father Marshall or somebody doing. Baptized priests cannot forgive in the name of Jesus. Uh-oh. I'm on the They cannot. Oh, okay. That's what it was. I forgot. Um, they cannot. Wait. Baptized priests cannot um, forgive sins in Jesus' name. They cannot celebrate the Eucharist. They can take the Eucharist. They can receive penance or reconciliation, but they cannot give that to others. Um, they cannot, what else? There's something else that I can't remember what I was going to say. But baptized priests can forgive in their own name. Like, I can forgive because I've been baptized, so I'm a baptized priest. They can teach others about God. They can um, sacrifice. They can pray and show love for others. They just can't do all the things an ordained priest does because that means that they have, like, Jesus' blessing to act the way Jesus would on earth and do the things that Jesus was able to do on earth not all of them but some of them okay so before we do this activity on the bottom i'm going to read you a story so just listen because this isn't in your book this is the first time they've done this and i don't know why so listen closely because i'm going to tell you this story and you may hear it again gianna beretta was born in milan italy on october 4th 1922 as a young woman, she dedicated herself to her schooling and applying herself through apostolic work and service to the elderly and needy. Apostolic work, what, what's the base word that you see in? Apostolic. Now you may not see the whole word, but you'll see a word that kind of looks like a word that you know. Zari? Apostles. Apostle. The base word of apostolic is apostle. Now, if we add the pre, I'm sorry, the suffix o l i c to a noun like apostle, it turns that noun into an adjective to describe somebody. So, knowing what an apostle is. And know that we have changed it to the adjective, the describing word form of apostolic. What do you think a person who is apostolic or a deed is apostolic? What does that mean about that? If a person is described as apostolic or something that they do is described as apostolic, like apostolic work. What does that mean? Come on, you guys know what apostle means. You're just not thinking. What is an apostle? You don't know 
what an apostle is and you've been going to Catholic school for five or more years? What is an apostle? Sorry, since I guess you're the only one who paid attention in religion class for the last five years or more. An apostle is someone who follows God. An apostle is someone who follows God. Wow, isn't it nice to learn a brand new word that you've never heard of before in your life? So if somebody is described as apostolic or something they do is described as apostolic, what does that mean? Aaron. Okay, so if somebody's, if it, apostolic work, what does that mean? She started applying herself through apostolic work. What does that mean? Zadie? And then she was following in God's footsteps. Okay, well, what would apostolic work be, though? Victoria? Um, what would that work be? If work is apostolic, what does it mean about that work, those, those deeds? Zari? It's like they're 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 learning about they're te they're studying like they're trying to study about what God has said about that and either they're trying to learn that. Well, apostolic work. When we do work, are we learning? Like if I go to my job and I do I go to work, am I learning there? Now, I'm yeah. saying homework, but if you're going to work, are you learning or are you doing something that you've mostly already learned how to do? Smith? You're doing something you mostly already learned So if how to you're do. doing apostolic work, what kind of work is that? You're not learning about God. Smith? But you're teaching about God or telling people what you learned. I don't know what you guys are kind of stuck on learning right now. Apostolic work. I go to work and I teach people, but not everybody goes to work and teaches people. Victoria? Okay, we already talked, we already talked about that. It has nothing to do with learning. I don't know why you guys got stuck on learning. She dedicated herself to her studies and applying herself through apostolic work and service to the elderly and needy. Those are two different things. School, apostolic work. Two different things. What would apostolic work be? We know the word apostle. We know apostolic is the adjective form, which means it's using apostle, apostle to describe something. So and if, a, if an apostle does God's work, that means a person who is, an, who is apostolic is doing the work of an apostle. A deed or work that is apostolic is doing God's work. Service, not learning. I don't know, I think you guys just heard studies and were like, oh, it's about learning. No, it isn't. Studies and apostolic work are two different things. The work that the apostles would do. Please sit up. Okay. You guys are zoning out really, really badly because that shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have had to tell you guys. If an apostle does God work, God's work, that means apostolic works are things that the apostles would have done. It's using the base word apostle, which is a noun, turning it into an adjective and describing work what somebody does not what somebody learns but what they do when i give you homework do i give you homework on something you don't know about you've never heard of no you've already learned it so now you're practicing it work does not necessarily mean learning it's just sometimes it does help you to learn Gianna earned her college degrees in medicine and surgery in 1949. She opened a medical clinic in 1950. She, spe she specialized in pediatrics, a doctor for children. 
Gianna had a great love for life and nature and would go skiing and mountain climbing. She believed that God was calling her to marriage and looked forward to building a true Christian family. She married Pietro Mola on September 24th, 1955, and they had four children. In 1961, when Gianna was pregnant with their fourth child, she was diagnosed with a disease that was life-threatening. She had to choose to treat the disease or to save her, wait, she had to choose to treat the disease to save her life or not be treated in order to save the life of the baby. After much prayer and trusting in God's providence, she was ready to give her life for her child. She said to the doctor, if you must decide between me and the child, do not hesitate. Choose the child. I insist on it. On April 21st, 1962, the child, a girl, was born. The doctors tried to save both the child and the mother, but the treatments were too late. On April 28th, Gianna Mola died. She was 39 years old. Pope Paul VI said about her, a young mother who, to give life to her daughter, sacrificed her own. St. John Paul II canonized her, that means made her a saint, on May 16th, 2004. And that's the story of St. Gianna Mola. So she did. She sacrificed everything the way Jesus did in order for her child to live. Now, Jesus did not ask that of us all the time. He doesn't. Most people never get asked that question. I want you, by God, I want you to sacrifice yourself in, for this child. Do you think that if G St. Gianna Mola had chosen to get the treatment, God would have punished her if her child had not survived? Zari? No. No. God would not have punished her for choosing to take the treatment and if her child did not survive the treatment. But because she chose, she made the ultimate sacrifice and chose this child over herself, God, what is the word I'm trying to use? Rewarded her by helping her to become a saint. So we don't have to make as hard a decision as St. Gianna, Gianna Mola did, but sometimes we must. And if we make maybe the different choice, we're not going to be punished at all. So don't think, oh, I'm going to have to sacrifice my entire life to be with God. No, you don't have to do that. But sometimes some people are asked that and they do. That does not mean that you have to. Ethan, please turn around and pay attention. So we see, yes, there are all different kinds of sacrifices that are made. Sometimes they are huge sacrifices like Jesus or St. Gianna Mola. Sometimes they're small sacrifices like, oh, I have some change in my pocket and I'm at mass. I'm going to throw it into the, the offering. But no sacrifice is too small in God's eyes. God's happy that you gave him 50 cents. He's, you don't need to do the big stuff, but you know, sometimes some people do. Maybe that'll be you. Maybe it won't, but it's okay. No sacrifice is too small for God, unless it's a sacrifice like Cain made, where he just said, here's one of my... What was it? He had the crops. Here's some crops. They're not that good, but here you go, God. Well, then, yeah, it was too small because he really didn't even try. But if you have 50 cents in your pocket and you wanted to go to like a gumball machine, because it's really all I can think of that you can use two quarters for, and you say, I'm going to give this to the church instead. Well, that's still a sacrifice because a gumball is pretty good when you want one. Okay, um, let's see. So now I'm going to give you about 10 minutes because we only have a little bit of science left. Look at page 67. It says, the directions say, while Jesus was on earth, he loved and cared for the people. He healed the sick, the lame, and the blind. He was merciful and forgave people's sins. Look through the gospel of, oh, let's see.
Okay, because I don't have Bibles for each of you, normally we would share, put you in groups, but because we don't have enough Bibles for each of you, we're not gonna be able to do this activity. Yes, Mason. You can do, ah, this activity on page 67, you can do it at home, do Friday for an extra religion grade. It is not mandatory, but if you have a Bible at home, especially a children's Bible, look through the Gospel of Matthew, find a story. Now, Jesus told a lot of parables. Remember, parables were stories that Jesus told. They weren't real things, but they were stories that Jesus told to teach a lesson. So look through the Gospel of Matthew, find one of those parables where Jesus, um, let's see, where Jesus showed love, mercy, and forgiveness to others, and then just summarize it write it in your own words so you're not copying it exactly it must be completed by Friday if you want that extra hundred I hope some of you take the opportunity to do this because it'll really help we are going to talk about some of these stories later on but not right now okay so go ahead put your religion book away and get out the okay Bible the New Testament Bible and a little carry-on Bible. 